All men are created equal. Coming from the United States Declaration of Independence, in theory, this is one of the foundational ideas that our country is built on. However, not all eBay sales are created equal, and in this video, we're going over the riskiest ones you can avoid, or if you're feeling lucky, give them a try, because certainly with great risk does come great reward. First thing is first, as you can see, I'm repping my EMU football hoodie. That's because it is homecoming weekend and the Eagles take on Miami of Ohio tomorrow. And I bet five whole dollars on the outcome of that game. Five whole dollars? How did this man become such a financial mogul? Well, doing things like reselling on eBay. I've been doing that for over a decade. Uh, and in my time on the platform, I have learned a few tricks about what not to sell, at least if you're a beginner, because some of these things can really screw you over. This is a subjective list based on my experiences, and certainly it is incomplete. If you have any other things you want to add to it in the comments below, I would love to hear it. The first thing I want to talk about that I have had personal problems with is international shipments direct to the customer. Now, eBay offers a global shipping service where you ship things to Tennessee, uh, or maybe it's Kentucky, one of those states, and then they forward it to your customer. So the customer pays them, they handle customs, all that stuff. Now, sometimes uh, you can either offer direct shipment to other countries or the customer requests it. I would recommend not doing this, even though potentially it does open you up to more sales because when you do this direct shipment to other countries, especially if they are, um, let's say, lesser developed nations, you risk running into a lot of problems. I had this happen to me about, uh, let's see, 18 months ago, right when all the lockdowns started, I shipped a camcorder direct to a different country. Uh, and it was held up in customs. It still is. I still get emails like every two months about its status. Uh, and I ended up losing my money and not getting the item back because it wasn't protected the same way that an eBay global shipment would be. Now, luckily for me, I insured it, so I'm not out money. But it just proved to show you that if you ship things directly, even though you can make more money that way, you are opening yourself up to more liability. Another thing I've seen a lot of risk associated with is brand new hot drops. What am I talking about? I'm talking about graphics cards or PS5s or things that are insanely in demand. People are paying way above retail price for these and so there is more incentive for thievery. Uh, I'm talking about people buying a PS5 and sending you back a, a, you know, a bag of rocks, something like that. Or just uh, straight up having it redirected in the middle and then picking it up. There's tons of scams that people can pull like that. Now certainly not everyone who buys these graphics cards is going to rip you off. And the vast majority of sales are legitimate. But still it is much riskier than you know DVDs for example. I'm not saying to avoid this. I'm saying be aware of the potential risk. And if it's your last $1,000 maybe do an in-person transaction. For other reasons not you know thievery or theft or deception or fraud glass is a very risky thing to ship and it's pretty evident as to why it breaks easily now you can insure these glass shipments but that still doesn't protect you all the time what I'd recommend doing is using spray foam on high value glass items spray foam stays more secure than packing peanuts certainly more than bubble wrap uh, and it's relatively affordable this next one might be the most infuriating number on the list number four it's any brand any brand and what do you mean any brand blake what are you talking about any brand any brand that's not how this works but it kind of does because of how much uh authority ebay gives certain brands over the resale of their product on their platform we saw this happen with all birds a few months ago there's a guy named drew's thrift and flips i don't know what is his name's drew uh, i'll link to his channel below and he had some great content either on instagram or youtube or both probably about how Allbirds just suddenly said hey you can't resell our eco conscious save the world product because it might be fake and uh overnight thousands of listings get taken down this is very risky because you can't really predict it does this mean you shouldn't sell any popular brands no, certainly not, but it does mean you should be diversifying the platforms that you sell on. If eBay takes down Allbirds, Mercari's still there. Facebook is still there. 
this is not so much avoid this product, but understand that there are more uh, advanced strategies that'll help you sell more items in the long run. This next one saw people potentially go to jail for selling it, and that's health-related items during, uh, you know, public panic moments. I'm talking about toilet paper and hand sanitizer and the masks that we saw being sold on eBay. I'd say March 2020, I believe, is when it all went crazy. That's risky because several people that I know spent thousands of dollars to resell this stuff and then suddenly they had thousands of dollars of product that they couldn't distribute to people who wanted them around the country. It was pretty crazy, in my opinion, that the government put the kibosh uh, on the most efficient distribution of goods, but they did. And that proves that whenever there's things that are really, really in demand, whether they're PS5s or whether it's hand sanitizer, uh, it always gets more risky because of individuals robbing from you or because the government thinks that they know better uh, than a market economy how to pass out goods. And the last bit of advice I have for you, and probably the most basic, but everyone should know this, uh, and that's accounts who buy from you with zero feedback. That's not an item to avoid per se, but a practice to avoid. And now not all zero feedback accounts are trying to scam you. Uh, eBay has new buyers, new sellers register every day. So seeing a zero feedback should not be a giant red flag, but a small red flag. It's a practice we see a lot of charlatans seem to do that is making new accounts and getting them banned and making new accounts and those get banned and just tons of zero feedback new accounts. They use it to buy products. They don't pay for them. They do some kind of scam. Uh, I'm not saying don't sell to these people, but I am saying if you do sell to them, Maybe take extra steps to ensure that everything goes smoothly. Hope this video helped you out. Hope it was entertaining. If you like videos like this, please, I encourage you, subscribe. Comment below with what you think the riskiest thing I missed was. Uh, and give the video a big thumbs up. Because you know what? Every time you do, an angel gets its wings. I'll see you later.